obejrzymy sobie, bo ja jestem ciekawy, jaki, co będziemy streamować, w co ja będę grał w tym roku. Już jest luty. A jestem w plecy z nowościami. Oprócz tego, Boy, że Hades 2 wychodzi, to wydaje mi się, że, że to niczym nie mam więcej pojęcia. 2023 was heralded as the biggest year in the history of video games to ever be made. Mam nadzieję, że teraz ja nie jestem niezagłuszony. As that film. incoherent word salad might suggest, it was a busy year for us here at IGN. That said, 2024 is shaping up to have quite a few big releases as well to keep you from finishing your 2023 backlog that you piled up because you were so busy tormenting Koroks and trying to get to second base with Shadow Hunter. Anyway, here are some of 2024's biggest upcoming games. Check it out. Check, 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 check it out. Let's go. No pokaż. Now before we get into it, just a quick disclaimer that video game release dates are about as reliable as weather forecasts at this point, so it's possible, if not likely, yeah, that these get dialogue. delayed or otherwise shuffled around. Oh, also, Tekken. this is by no means Mark a comprehensive list of everything coming out in 2024. It is just a handful of games that you thought you might like to have Osiem? on your radar. If something that you're excited about personally didn't make the cut, I swear it has did nothing personal or political or weird or sinister or Machiavellian. We just we, we can only talk about so many games before our video editor dies of exhaustion. Oh my god, I almost died! No. I almost died! That was so scary! Thank you! It's okay, it's alright. I love you as the TikTok actors. If you want a more thorough roundup, every month we put up a new video detailing that month's upcoming releases, so keep an eye out for that every month, around the time rents do, maybe. That January one is already up, so go watch that once you're done with this. If you're sitting around checking your enchanted hourglass, waiting on that Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, good news, Ubisoft whipped up a nice 2.5D Prince Demo of Persia Metroidvania to hold you over. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, goes back to the series side-scrolling platformer roots, but with some modern twists. That's out for basically everything January 18. On January 26th, hot on the heels of last year's new installments of beloved fighting games Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, Tekken enters the fray with his eighth entry, just putting those new-gen consoles through their faces and really showing what Unreal 5 can do. That's on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. I'm playing more Mortal Kombat, but on the same day on new-gen and PC, as well as last-gen, is like a dragon infinite wealth. Tekken, 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 to nie jest przypadkiem Yakuza nowa? Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? To nie jest y, z serii Yakuza? Giereczka? Dziś źle kojarzę. Bo też takie pojebane arcy tu widzę jak Dragon Quest player Ichiban Kasuga returns for another wacky hero's journey and this time he's teaming up with semi-pro pocket circuit racer and UFO catcher enthusiast Kazuma Kiryu who you may recognize from like the last nine Yakuza games. Or maybe not. He has a new haircut. Who knows? He's so mysterious. As you probably heard by now, the Arkham architects over at Rocksteady are ditching the Dark Knight and trying their hand at a co-op looter shooter starring Task Force grab, X, better known as the Suicide Squad. The squad's mission: kill the Justice League. The name of this game: Suicide. Oglądaliśmy te półgodziny temu właśnie filmik porównujący Suicide Squad, który wyszedł do dzisiaj albo wczoraj z Batman Arkham Knight City. Nie pamiętam z 2015. No kurde fuck. Tragedia. Może gameplayowo się broni, no ale jeżeli chodzi o wizualnie, to nie powinno się tak gier robić, wydawać, no. Red Squad kills the Justice League. You, you probably could have put that one together. The release date, February 2nd for new gen and PC. That same day if you missed Persona 3 when it was on PS2 and then on PSP and then later playable in PS Vita. Persona jest jedną z tych gier, gdzie ma całą masę fanów, a ja nie rozumiem fenomenu. A to chyba przez to, że dzieje się, nie wiem, w szkołach. Tak? Czy ja gry pomyliłem totalnie? Yeah, well, first of all, shame on you, but second of all, good news because it's been fully rebuilt as a new modern console RPG. It's coming to everything but Switch, which is sad because the Switch is the closest thing we have anymore to a PSP or a Vita. Who knows? Maybe they'll port it. The original Hell Divers was a tough as nails top-down co-op twin stick shooter about stabbing aliens on other planets. Jak ja żałuję, że oni odeszli od rzutu izometrycznego, nie jest to bliżej tego fakt persona. Adding quite a bit of scale and complexity to the missions and wearing its starship troopers. Jedynka była naprawdę świetnie zrobiona, żeby sobie ponaparzyć z kumplami na koopie. Well, it's PS5 and PC on February 8th, so there you go. One game that has been in the works for quite a while is Skull and Bones. What began as a spin-off of Assassin's Creed Black Flag's naval combat has been delayed something like seven times. So pardon me if I'm skeptical that it's going to come out on February 16th. But that's what they're saying this time, and that's on new gen PC and Amazon Luna. On the 29th, Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and company are back. 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 Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, and
wakacje chyba, 223. Okres wakacyjny. Joined by quite a few familiar faces, and now they're turned loose at a massive, sprawling, open world and infinitely more detailed recreation of the original FF7's overworld map, which you can travel around by Chocobo or on a Segway if you so desire. FF7 Remake was an incredibly ambitious start, and it sounds like Rebirth is going to be a substantially larger undertaking in all the best ways. Homeworld 3 is the long overdue follow-up to a beloved deep space strategy game that was released over 20 years ago. On March 8th, this franchise emerges from cryosleep on PC, so here's hoping it can... Ja jestem fanem RTS-u, tak? No, no jestem. Warcraft 3 i tak dalej, te wszystkie sportowe sprawy, bla bla bla. I Homeworld 1 był świetny. Naprawdę był zajebisty. Dwójka pewnie też była zajebista, nawet nie pamiętam, pewnie w nią grałem, ale już byłem bardziej Warcraftem zafascynowany tego typu sprawami. Bardziej rywalizacyjne RTS-y. Ale ta trójka to jakoś, no na ten moment, może to się źle zestarzeje ten film, ale totalnie mnie nie jara. No totalnie mnie nie kręci. Nie wiem, tak jakby na dzisiejsze czasy standardy to już nie było to samo, nie robiło tego wow, nie. survival horror gets a new installment. At a glance, Alone in the Dark might seem like another remake along the lines of what Dead Space and Resident Evil did recently, but it's being framed as a revival, which is fitting given the Southern Gothic themes. It's telling a whole new story, but long-time fans will likely get some deja vu as it is set in the dark. Where the original 1992 game took place. On March 22nd, Dragon's Dogma 2 drops, a feverishly anticipated sequel to Capcom's criminally underrated open-world action RPG. This has the same kind of extremely vocal fan base that Demon Souls did before from Soft Drop Dark Souls, and it blew up so big it inspired a whole friggin' genre. Obligane. Na Twitchu na pewno. The second coming of Dark Souls, but it'll probably click with Elden Ring fans dying for a big sprawl in Western fantasy action. RPG, Niby fajne, fajnie się te, te bossy pizgałaś, może było wskakiwać, ale kurde. Coś mi tam nie dało to. Roluje mnie, chłop powiedział Ghost of Tsushima, co nie? Kolejna gra, w którą nie będę mógł zagrać. Pomimo tego, że lubię samurajów i tak dalej, japońskie klimaty, tego typu, bo na PS5 wychodzi. Uj. Sekiro mi zostaje tylko. The PS5 exclusive open world action RPG comes courtesy of Team Ninja, the studio behind last year's Wolong Fallen Dynasty, the Neo games, and of course, Ninja Gaiden. Still on March 22nd and probably considerably less punished, Musher Matriarch takes the spotlight in a long overdue solo adventure of her own. This isn't a role-playing game in the conventional sense, but the whole thing is framed as a stage production. I'm not interested in saying that Musher Matriarch has 64 because I'm not going to play various roles. If you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not going to play various roles. If you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not going to play various roles. If you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not going to play various roles. If you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not going to play various roles. If you get what I'm saying. Because I'm not going to play various roles. Anyway, enough about cute princess stuff. If you're looking for an ass kicking, mark your calendar for August 20th, because that is when the long-awaited black myth Wukong will make its journey. To będzie kolejna gra, którą na skinie przejdziemy. A jeżeli nie przejdziemy, to pewnie zaczniemy. Kto ma wiedzieć ten wiadom? Journey to the West, which was the original inspiration for Dragon Ball, and which was loosely adapted from the video game back in 2010. Bardzo mi się podoba. And Ninja Theories enslaved Odyssey to the West. Trochę mi nie pasuje. I teraz nie chcę wyjść na rasistę, bo nim nie jestem, ale trochę mi nie pasuje, że gramy małpą, nie? Trochę mi nie pasuje, szczerze, że gramy małpą, ale myślę, że jestem w stanie to przełknąć. No nie? No. Our Black Myth preview from last year says it's definitely got some Soulsborne DNA, but plays in a way that it's all its own. That's a new gen and PC. Meanwhile, a few weeks and about 38,000 years later, there's Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine 2, which drops September 9th. Years of War's muscle-bound dudes and power armors with chainsaw guns copied Warhammer 40K's homework a little bit, so it was only fair that Warhammer did the same. Back in 2011, the original Space Marine was widely praised as a multiplayer. There were different classes. Tam turd, like a tam sturmowca, nie sturmowca, był też chyba medyk. Fajnie było nawet to zdobione. I się pisgało third personem, nie? Trzecie osoby się biło. Dwójka, to byś miał chyba po prostu więcej tego samego co jedynka i bardzo dobrze. A kiedy to wychodzi, to pojęcia bladego nie mam. Ogólnie uniwers Warhammera, pomimo tego, że lubię, to jest mi trochę obce, jeżeli chodzi o fabułę. To jest tak skomplikowane uniwersum, że głowa mnie boli od tego, jakbym miał się zagłębiać i kminić co z czym i dlaczego. A totally solid Gears like set against the utterly bonkers backdrop of Games Workshop's tabletop game. Now, a whole middle schooler's lifetime later, it's getting a sequel, which looks to take full advantage of the new hardware to render massive swarms of terror eggs. Even if it's gold, the rest of them are better. I'm not sure if it's better. Because the score plus one or plus two doesn't. Following the same Warhammer 40k naming convention of aggressive word plus type of melee weapon followed by a number, there's also Hellblade 2: Senua's Saga. 
to follow up to Ninja Theory's 2017 sleeper hit, Senua's Sacrifice, Senua's Saga looks to be raising the bar in every possible way while maintaining its blend of dark fantasy and psychology. Not for me. NPC, but we do not have a release date quite yet. Also on Xbox Series and PC with no hard Stalker. release date is Stalker 2 Heart of Pamiętacie jak Stalker był określany za po prostu giereczkę, która zrewolucjonizuje cały gatunek i całą branżę gier komputerowych? No, nie do końca się tak stało. Tam świat miał dosłownie żyć swoim tempem, swoim życiem i te pierwsze zapowiedzi były takie, że tam będzie ważne jedzenie, będzie ważne to wszystko, że oni będą zczytywali, będziemy mogli zostać napadnięci przez innych Stalkerów, że no normalnie tak jakbyś miał MMOSa na singlu, nie? Ten deseń, to były, które to były lata? 2007 albo 6 były te zapowiedzi, bo gierka wyszła w 2007? Chyba w 2007 roku, na obóz wtedy taneczny pojechałem, pamiętam jak to wyszło i jechał z nami ziomeczek, co miał plecak z edycji kolekcjonerskiej jedynki. No, no na dwójkę nie mniej czekam, jestem zainteresowany. Chernobyl, though that does currently have a release window of sometime in the first quarter of 2024. Considering this game's development was put on hold so members of the Ukrainian team could step away from the desk to defend their country from invading Russian forces, I don't think anyone will fault the studio for the long wait or get mad if the release gets delayed further. It looks like a massively ambitious game, and the original is a modern classic, though maybe not exactly modern anymore. In the time since the last Stalker game's release, the actual Chernobyl exclusion zone has become a tourist destination. From this point forward, the rest of the games in this video do not have a release date or release window at all. It's the Wild West, so to speak. Speaking of which, one of these games is Star Wars Outlaws, and in addition to looking like a space western, it's also wild that it took this long to get a game that could be described as g up to be though to be precise, it's a Ubisoft game, so a more apt comparison might be Watch Dogs with Womp Rats. I am definitely not complaining at the prospect of an open-world Star Wars game that focuses on the scum and villainy of a galaxy far, far away. I will, however, complain if Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus don't show up. Boba Fett's fine. Nie mówią te postaci. No Boba Fett. Okay, bez tym bumerem. But I really want Bosk and Dengar and Zuckus in there. Put those weird dudes in this game, please. Super Giant Games has been chugging along for over a decade, regularly putting out colorful, deceptively complex games that have consistently pleased. Najbardziej wyczekiwana gra 2024 przez mnie to jest właśnie Hades 2 i to będziemy tak uderzać jak. Oh. Critics and fans alike, and Hades was met with such a unanimously positive reception that you really can't blame them for making a second installment, which is supposed to arrive sometime this year. For any Persona Chciał... fans rolling their eyes, będę musiał przełknąć, że w Hadesie dwójce protagonistą jest kobieta. Ale no przeżyje, no przeżyje to, przeżyje. The casual newcomers flocking to Persona 3 Reload. Phew, I have just the thing which you probably already know about. Metaphor Refantasio, a cool sounding name for a brand new RPG in a brand new universe from a ton of the people behind the Shin Megami Tensei slash Persona series. If you want a JRPG that doesn't go quite as hard in the paint or the fonts, there's always Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which remakes the beloved GameCube RPG for Switch, and which should be a nice follow up to the Super Mario RPG remake that we got way back in 2023. <laughs> Będzie chciała sobie grać na przykład w jakiegoś Mario czy usiądziemy kiedyś razem przy konsoli jakiejś od Nintendo i będziemy się ścigali czy grali w Mario razem. No, poważnie. If the phrase Seeking Densetsu means anything to you, you're probably well aware of Visions of Mana, but if you're not, it is the first mainline entry in quite some time in Square Enix's beloved Mana action RPG series that got its start way back a million years ago as a Final Fantasy spin-off for the original Game Boy. Anyway, it's probably better known as Secret of Mana on the Super Nintendo. Uh, here's the part of the video where I say that I would like to get an HD remake of Secret of Evermore, which was like the weird sort of bastard American cousin of Secret of Mana that was on Super NES. I love that game, one of my favorite games of all time. I'm one of 17 people who feels that way. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about games that are coming out in the future. There's no shortage of big fat fantasy RPGs being cooked up by the fine folks at Xbox Game Studios and a valve looks like dla, it could make a nice move for anybody who's no, 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 waiting around for Fable Horizon or Skyrim 2 Dragonborn Evolved. again, aka Elder Scrolls 6. No, anyway, a vow is set in Obsidian's Stories of Eternity Universe and it looks like a fun first person high fantasy. Bo to jest gierka robiona w świecie Pilarsów. Pilars of, Pilars of Eternity od Obsidianu, co nie? I teraz z Pilarsami był ten problem właśnie, że świat mi nie pasował w tej grze. I nie wiem, czy Evolved to dowiezie. Dla mnie.
you know, nie dla ogółu oczywiście. Fantasy jaunt, and based on Obsidian's pedigree, it should have some good twists and turns depending on what kind of bad decisions you make, you know, like a proper RPG. This list is not alphabetical, but Zenless Zone Zero so has two many easy in the title to not put it last. That is the next so free play action RPG from no Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail team. And this one has a super stylish, quasi-futuristic oh. urban setting that's going to be coming to mobile and PC and probably console at some point. Speaking of which, Genshin is expected to hit Switch at some point in 2024, and there's very good possibility that Nintendo might just drop a new console entirely, whether that is a Super Switch or a Switch U or something totally else entirely, probably with a better name. And like I said, there is a ton of other stuff we didn't cover. Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is going to be a substantial expansion to an already massive game. There are some rumblings about the next Doom game, possibly a prequel. And of course, long-awaited sequels like Metroid Prime 4 and Dragon Age: The Dread Wolf Rises, just to name a few. But as of recording this in late December 2023, details on all of those are pretty big. So we can tackle them some other time. On that note, I'm going to shut up so my wonderful video editor, Chris Del Padre, can put the finishing touches on this video and our wonderful producer, Amanda Medina, can publish it and we can all shut down our computers for the holidays and go be with our loved ones. I mean, right after I tell you to sound off in the comments with the games that you're most excited about in 2024, especially if I forgot to mention them. Tell us why you're looking forward to them. Explain why or why not. Use complete sentences. Your answer is worth 10% of your final grade. For extra credit, go check out that video on January's big game releases and make sure you are following and subscribed to IGN on your platform of choice for all of the latest updates on upcoming games and other entertainment. And there's the bell. Happy New Year, everybody. I will see you later. Show my laptop. I'm going to go and have some eggnog. 